Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 77. Day, day 3077. 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 77. We are on page number 283. Please turn to it. On page 283, you will see that there are only 14 problems. There is no 15 problem. 15 problem, as it says on the blackboard, is a bonus problem. It's not in the book. Number 15 is what we're going to do today. This problem that we are about to do, number 15, is very similar to what we did yesterday on question number 14 dealing with the notion of rectangular box. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says, what is the greatest possible straight line distance? Has to be a straight line distance, obviously, because if you're given two points, and if you're asked to find the greatest possible distance between A and B, obviously we're not going to go all over the place to get to it. It has to be a straight line distance. What is the greatest possible, what is the greatest possible straight line distance between any two points on a rectangular box that is 8 by 9 by 12. 8 by 9 by 12. Let's draw the rectangular box first. Before we draw the box, here we are given the answer choices. Let's take a look at them. Answer choices are 17, 18, 19, and 20. Uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Let's draw the box. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase the answer choices now because we need the room. Why waste that room idea? A rectangular box, and we're looking for the greatest possible straight line distance. Let's draw the box first. As best as we can. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Something like this. One. And we're looking for the greatest possible distance which is the exact same thing what we did yesterday when we were talking about the length of the diagonal. The greatest possible distance is going to be this distance right here from P to Q. Why P to Q? Because I'm in a creative mood and since we used A to B yesterday, being creative person that I am, we move on to P to Q. And this distance is what we're looking for. In order to find, in order to find this distance, just like last time, we have to use we have to make use of this triangle right here. Let's call it PQR. And this this angle right here is the right angle. And the greatest possible distance is going to be PQ. But the problem here is that before because they are looking for because they are looking for the greatest possible distance in this box, which happens to be which happens to be 8 by 9 by 12, 8 by 9 by 12. Let's call this, this distance right here, the vertical distance 8. Let's call this distance from here to here 9. And let's call this distance from here to here 12. The question is, which way, which way do we look at it and does the answer change? For example, in my hand here, I have a rectangular box. As you can see, it's a rectangular box. Okay? The greatest possible distance it's not this one, obviously. As you can see, that uh, it does not fit there. My pointer does not fit in there. This, we're not talking about a distance like that because it sticks out. We're going to put it inside and like this. Now it now it fits. You see, from that, from that corner right here, from the inside, from the inside, from Q to P. That's the greatest possible straight line distance. Now here's here's the problem. We can look at it. We can look at we, we can look at the from this vantage point, at this face. Or we can look at it like that, or we can look at it like that, like this, or like that, or like that. And the floor will keep changing. The bottom is going to change. Here, the bottom is. This is the bottom here. If you look at it this way, now the bottom bottom is going to be this part. If you look at it, you get the idea. There are, so the question is, does the answer change depending on how we look at the thing, which depending on which floor we use? We'll answer that in a second. For the time being, let's use this floor as it is drawn. As it is drawn, the floor here is this, this side from here to here. It's 9 
from P to, this doesn't have a name, we have P, Q, R, let's call it S. P to S is 9 because that's the same distances from here to here. And the floor is 9 by 12. 9 by 12. So what we have to do here, in order for us to answer this question of what is the greatest possible distance from P to Q, we could simply apply a Pythagorean theorem. It's a two application of Pythagorean theorem. We're going to have to apply it twice. Not, nothing to it. Very simple, very straightforward. First, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out this diagonal on the floor, P to R. Let's call it X. Once we have this diagonal P to R, we'll apply the Pythagorean theorem one more time to the triangle that you see here, P, Q, R, which is also a right angle triangle. And you can see it's 90 degrees right here at point R. So we'll apply the Pythagorean theorem one more time and then look for the distance PQ and let's call it D for the diagonal. Just like, just like yesterday. So let's get going. So here's a scenario one. There is a solution. Scenario one, where we have the floor of 9 by 12, as we can see here, 9 by 12. And our floor looks like this. This side is 12. This side right here, this side right here is 9. And what we're looking for is this distance x, the floor diagonal. Do you understand? This, this, this distance that we're looking at is P to R. P to R. That's this distance P to R. P to R, this distance from here to here is 9 in the floor, and this distance from here to here is 12. That's what that is. That's fine. So x squared is going to equal 9 squared plus 12 squared. 12 squared is 144. 9 squared is 81. We get a 5. We get a 12. Carry 1. Oh, what do you know? That's 225. 225, which means x is square root of 225, which is 15. Did you notice anything? We should have noticed something. We should have noticed something. Had we had we been paying note, had we been paying attention, we wouldn't have had to do this work. This work was not necessary. This triangle that we see here, this triangle that we see here, P R P R. Let's call it. We have the S here. Let's call it D. The triangle that we're looking at here is P R T. Do you notice anything about it? It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. We didn't have to do any of this thing. We didn't have to do any of this thing. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. This, is, this side is 9. What much happens? This side is 9. And 9 is simply 3 times 3, isn't it? This side is 12, which is simply 4 times 3. 3, 4, 5. Right here, the x that is. If this is 4 times 3 and this is 3 times 3, x would have to be 5 times 3. The diagonal would have to be 5 times 3. 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle incognito. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's the same triangle as a 3, 4, 5. It just has been blown up to 300%. We didn't have to do any of this thing. Anyway, it's 15. So now we know the x is 15. Let's erase this thing. We're done with it. Now that we know that x is equal to 15, we're going to look at triangle PQR. P. Q and R, this is the right angle. P to R we just found is 15, which is our X. Q to R, Q to R we know is 8. And now we find the diagonal. Shall we? Let's get going. So D squared, one more time, is equal to 8 squared plus 15 squared. 15 squared is 225. 15 squared is 225. I hope you know your squares. You must know all your squares 1 through 20 by heart for the GRE. Do you understand? 8 squared is 64. We get a 9, we get an 8, and we get 289. D squared is 289. And the answer choices that were given to us, I'm going to put them again one more time. Answer choices that were given to us was 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Obviously, it's neither 19, uh, obviously, it's neither 20 nor 21.
because 20 squared is 400 and this is only 300, not even 300. It can be 20, it can be 21 because D is going to be the square root of it. It can be 20 or 21. 19 is also too large, 19 is too close to 20. It's either 17 or 18. It cannot be 18 because 18 times 18, if you were to multiply 18 times 18, you will end up in a 4. The unit digit is going to be 4. The unit, unit digit here is 9. Of course it's 17. Of course we know it's 17 because we know our square. 17 squared is 289. The diagonal, the greatest possible distance is 17. The answer is A. The answer is A. So to, you, we may also recognize that 289 is a very, very familiar number to us because it is also uh, the approximate value of square root of 3. Square root of 3 is approximately equal to square root of 2.89 and square root of 2.89 is 1.7 and therefore square root of 3 is approximately equal to 1.7. We have talked about it many a times. Let's look at scenario 2. Let's look at scenario 2 and let's change, let's change the floor. Let's change the floor because we are curious as to what happens. Let's use the floor of 8 by 9. We already have a 9. Let's put an 8 here and let's put a 12 there. And let's repeat the same procedure and see what happens. We are done with all of this thing. We don't need it anymore. Let's move on to scenario 2. Why don't, you, why, don't, why don't you do it yourself? Do it yourself, see what you get. Pause the video and do it yourself. So now, I'm going to pick up some speed now. The floor is 8 by 9. 8 by 9. So that's the floor. 8 by 9, that's our floor. We're looking for this x here. The floor is 8 by 9. x squared equals, we're looking for floor diagonal, the floor diagonal being the x here, from p to r, x squared equals 64, 80 squared plus 9 squared, which is 64 plus 9, uh, 81, 64 plus 81, we're going to get a 5 and a 14. So x is the square root of 145. x is square root of 145, we already know it, square root of 145. Now let's look at triangle pqr. Same as before, triangle PQR, keeping in mind that x we just found to be square root of 145. So let's do that. Let's put the triangle PQR here so we can see it. PQR, this is the right angle. This distance is the floor, floor diagonal we just found out is square root of 149, or 145 rather. And this is the diagonal we're looking for. EQR right here. Let's do it one more time. We, we need the room. I'm going to raise this thing. So now we're looking at triangle PQR and triangle PQR this side is square root of so D squared which is our hypotenuse here. It is our hypotenuse because it's facing a right angle. D squared is equal to that side which in this case is 12. It's going to be 12 squared. I wonder what we're going to get. Plus the square root of 145 squared. This is 140, square, square of 12 is 144 plus 145. 145 and 145, 145 and 145 would have been 290 since we have 144 and 149 is 289. Well, what do you know? 289, same as before. And therefore the length of the diagonal is 17. Of course it's the same as before. It's not going to change obviously. It doesn't matter how we look at the box. What is the longest distance and the longest the, the longest length of stick that you can fit in it. The longest length of stick that you can fit in it. Of course it's not going to change the fact whether we look at it this way or whether we look at it this way or whether we look at it that way. It's not going to change it. Of course that's the longest one that fits in. It's 17. It's 17. Same as before. Let's look at scenario 3. Let's look at scenario 3. And as I said before, do it yourself. It, it doesn't hurt. Let's look at scenario three, and this time let's have let's have a floor. We need we need to erase all of this thing. Let's have a floor of eight by three. We haven't done eight by three. Oh, eight by twelve either. Eight by twelve. We already have an eight. Let's put a twelve here, and let's put a nine there.
Let's find the flow diagonal first. The flow diagonal being P to R. Let's find the flow diagonal first. P to R. This is distance X. R to R to T is 12 this time. And P to T is 8. So X squared is going to be 12 squared plus 8 squared is 144 plus 64 8 0 carry 1 208 x is square root of 208 we have that already we can move on we already know the value of x which is square root of 208 let's find the diagonal p to q the longest possible distance between two points longest possible straight line distance between two points in this rectangular box let's, let's draw the Let's draw the triangle PQR one more time, one last time. P, Q, R, and this time Q to R is going to be 9. This distance is what we're looking for, the distance T. X we just found out to be square root of 208. Let's do it, shall we? So D squared, D squared is going to be square root of 9 plus the square root of the square root of 208. Square root of 208 squared. That's 80, 81, 81 plus 208. 81 plus 208, 80 plus 200 would have been 280, and therefore 1 and 8 is going to be 289. Same as before, of course, same as before. It is 17. It does not matter. It does not matter what your vantage point is. The longest distance being the longest distance is always going to be the same. That is the longest distance was that, uh, that uh, between the two points on, a, on this rectangular box. How you, how you put it, which, which side you treat as a floor, it really doesn't matter. As you can clearly see all three of the scenarios. And that was the end of the geometry part. And finally, we arrive at where we wanting to be in, in the book, which is the data analysis path, which is where a lot of people have trouble. So starting from tomorrow, in the next video, we'll begin th that portion of the book dealing with data analysis. Okay, bye now.